So uh, why did you choose C++ as your uh, specialty? I didn't really choose it. It kind of chose me. I was asked to be a TA for a, or a, a teaching assistant in a class at the university, and I had to learn C++ to do that. And that sort of led to an offer to develop a training course for professional software developers. And that led to a book, and that led to a career. I see. And uh, you know, your new book is entitled Effective C++, Modern C++. Mm -hmm. So what is modern C++? Mm -hmm. Modern C++ normally means C++ 11 and C++ 14. So in other words, the newest versions of the language. And that's what I mean by it when I use it in the, in the title of the book. So C++ 11 and 14, right? Yes. Uh, okay, uh, C++ develops, and uh, what can you say about compilers? And did you really imply that Microsoft's compiler sucks right, right there <laughs> on your... <laughs> Um, it's probably fair to say that I made a joke that implied that Microsoft's compiler sucks. Um, I would not say that Microsoft's compiler sucks in general. The, the, the thing about compilers is that if you look at them in isolation as an individual tool, they all have strengths and weaknesses. Specifically when you deal with Microsoft's compiler, um, it is one piece of a much larger development environment for professional C++ software developers, and so they work on a complete development environment, and what I will say is that most of the people who I know would prefer to work in that overall environment, even if they're not necessarily developing exclusively for Windows. So the compiler has some weaknesses, and Microsoft is well aware of those, but as part of the overall suite of tools that they make available to software developers, it's certainly among the best, if not the best in the industry. How about Ceylang? Um, Clang has come sort of out of nowhere. Two years ago, I would have said it was not important. These days, it's extremely important for checking standards conformance. My sense is that it still doesn't generate as good object code, for example, as GCC, which is its normal competitor, but it's certainly getting a lot better, and I expect that Clang will be only increasingly important. I like Clang, by the way. I, I, I like Clang, by the way. Thank you. And uh, some people think C++ is blowing at the moment, but uh, Tioba Index shows that it loses popularity, and uh, Currently, uh, domain-related uh, languages are on the hype. Mm -hmm. So h how do you see future of C++? Uh, is it going to be a general uh, purpose language or industry standard? What I can say is that in, in, the, in the domains where C++ is strong, which tends to be where performance matters a lot and where control over hardware matters a lot, and as an implication where saving energy is really important, which includes servers and mobile devices, C++ seems to be very, very strong. And I don't anticipate it becoming weaker in those areas at all. So um, I don't put a lot of faith in the Tyobi Programming Index. Um, I, I've been known to cite it as well. Um, so I mean, I think it tells you something, but at the same time, what I can tell you is that in the last two or three years, I've been busier than I've ever been. My colleagues have been busier than they've ever been. Um, C++ user groups, which used to be about four or five worldwide, now there's about 30. Um, there's conferences on C++ that did not exist a few years ago. I think there's a lot of objective evidence that there is increased interest in information about C++. And uh, Linus Torvalds once said that C++ is horrible language. Uh, he hates substandard programmers and uh, because of them he thinks uh, it's easier to generate, quote, uh, total and utter crap with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you, do you have to say? Um, the quote is pretty famous in the community. It's clear that Linus is not a C++ uh, fan. You know, I think it's fair to say that any programming language you can write really bad software in. People can write really bad software in C as well. So um, I don't think it's really an objective evaluation of the language. I will say that um, there's more features in C++, and as a result, there's more ways that you can probably go wrong, and it certainly requires a lot of discipline and attention to detail, but I don't think there's anything about the language itself that inherently leads to poorer quality software, and I will say that um, if I had a choice between programming in C or in C++, I would program in C++ just so I could have classes and destructors. That's nice. Uh, how would you encourage people to become C++ programmers, and uh, why should they learn it? I think it makes the most sense to learn C++ when you're trying to develop software that C++ is particularly good at. So these days, for example, anybody working in um, 
what I would call serious video games, the console video game industry, it, it basically runs on C++. Anybody trying to do work in um, the, I'm going to say that sort of the, um, the finance industry, but what, what I mean by that is things like um, um, algorithmic trading, um, people doing lots of analysis for investment risk assessment. Um, the C++ is also extremely strong in those areas, so if you wanted to go into those kinds of areas, that would be a good place to go. Anything where performance is important, anything to do with simulations, anything to do with operating systems. Um, it, it's interesting that um, the infrastructure of most of the stuff that people do with these days runs on C++. For example, Java is built on C++, and .NET is also built on C++. So if you're interested in doing the kinds of things that it's a good language for, then I would say, great, you know, you should learn the language. On the other hand, if you're interested in learning, um, or rather in, in solving different kinds of problems, maybe um, user interface-based problems where C++ is not strong, then I would say you should probably learn a technology that's more suited to that kind of application. Okay, and uh, good C++ tools are really expensive, while let's say uh, Java, is, uh, Java tools are, are mostly free or open source. And uh, can you suggest uh, reliable ID or uh, other tools for beginners? For beginners, um, I know that Microsoft has given away its development environment for basically non-professional programmers for a number of years now. Like I said, that's considered one of the best IDEs in the business. The one that they give away for free doesn't have all the features that their, their professional one does, but for individual developers starting out or small groups, from what I can tell, it's, it's perfectly adequate. And then for people who don't want to have that kind of an IDE, there's, there's still a lot of people who are programming um, you know, using Emacs and GCC, which is not really a modern environment, but there's a lot of people who still use that very successfully. It's been a while since I've looked at Eclipse, but um, I know that, that the Eclipse environment has been getting better over time. So I would expect that you can probably do pretty reasonable development in, with Eclipse and GCC as well. Uh, what do you think about the language called D? Uh, it was uh, designed as a replacement for C++ and mm -hmm. was recently adopted by Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, I, Andre Alexandrescu, who is one of the co-designers of D, is a very good friend of mine. And so I, I'm, I'm familiar with the efforts that he has been making with the language. I think it's an interesting language. My personal opinion is that it doesn't have anything compelling enough to convince large numbers of C++ programmers that they should quit C++ and they should start using D. Having said that, I think it's a nice language design in many ways, and I think that it has other strengths. So, And I think even um, Andre and, and Walter Bright, the other designer of the language, would agree that these days the goal is not to replace C++, but rather to have a language that stands on its own merits sort of between C++ and the other languages that people use. All right, and uh, you are an authority for uh, many people, and uh, can you tell us who is your guru? I don't have any particular gurus. Um, I certainly have a large number of people in the C++ community who I learn from and have learned from. Um, certainly Herb Sutter would be on the list. Andre Alexandrescu would be on the list. Obviously, Bjarne would be on the list. Um, Anthony Williams, for example, I learned a lot of stuff about concurrency from him. And then... For individual language features, it is not uncommon for me to talk to people on the standardization committee who possibly wrote those, uh, those proposals. Um, John Lakos and, and Pablo Halpern co-authored co one that I uh, w was influential when I wrote my most recent book. So there's a lot of people who know different things from what I know and have different perspectives, and I try to reach out for them, and, and they're usually very generous in sharing their time. Uh. Well, you majored in biology, and uh, do you think about transhumanism and cybernetics and connecting software and the uh, human body? It's been a long time since I've done biology. Um, you know, what, what, I would, what I will say is that if you view um, the adoption of hardware and software essentially as a new form of medicine, as a, essentially an extension of the idea of um, replacing limbs or, or body parts or whatever, it seems like a completely logical thing to do that and so I'm sort of I'll be interested to see where things go as far as that progresses over the years. Okay and uh, the last question I would like you to tell us about the language Snowball. <laughs> okay um, I learned Snowball many many years ago in a comparative programming languages course and I really liked Snowball at the time 
Um, it was it's a it's a string pattern matching language. I don't even know if it's if it's used any longer. But it had the unique characteristic that every function had to return a boolean, true or false. So I spent a couple of weeks programming in Snowball, and I liked the idea so much that for about a few months after that, in any other programming language that I used, every function I had returned true or false because I just thought it was such a good idea, and it took me a, a long time to to get out of that habit.